If you use Blender on a daily basis, especially for creating big scenes and environments, then every drop of power your machine has is actually important, because often things slow down and sometimes crash. But some smart Blender developers actually made some add-ons that can help you optimize your scenes, playing on textures, geometry to give you more juice on your RAM, CPU, and GPU. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We're gonna start with Memsaver by Polygonic, which is all about memory optimization. Think of it as a personal trainer to help you squeeze your scene into that tight VRAM budget. So it basically analyzes your scene from the camera's perspective and downscales textures or simplifies meshes that don't need full detail, so your project fits into memory without visibly losing quality. For instance, if you have 8K textures on an object which appears tiny in the background, Memsafer can generate smaller versions of those images, and if some high-quality object is far from the camera, it can apply adaptive decimation based on distance. It is actually pretty smart. It even considers animation, making sure if something moves closer in the later frame. It doesn't overly degrade it in the earlier frames. So everything is non-destructive too. The original files stay untouched because it stores optimized images and it does that separately and uses modifiers for smart mesh decimation, which means you can revert it anytime you need to. On top of that, Memsaver can spit out a detailed memory usage report. I mean a report of your scene or library and it supports UDIM, image sequences, and even works with Octane's renderer, covering all the bases for a modern Blender workflow. So I would say if you're struggling with out of memory errors, or just want a smoother viewport and render big scenes easier, I think Memsaver is gonna be a huge help. And by the way, they added recently a one-click decimate meshes tool to complement the texture optimizer, which improved the feedback, because now it tells you how many images were optimized and how much RAM you saved. This, in addition to an overhauled memory report. On the other hand, Scene Optimization is a camera-driven optimization add-on, which helps you get real-time performance gains by only focusing on what the camera actually sees. Think of it as an automatic stage crew that hides and simplifies anything off-camera or unnecessary. It actually has one operation with a few nodes. For example, it can automatically hide objects that are outside of the camera's view, and even hide the back faces of objects which means polygons facing away from the camera, so that your GPU and CPU aren't wasting effort on things that nobody will see in the render. It also includes a viewport simplification feature, basically creating a lightweight representation of your models in the 3D view, while keeping the full quality of the final render, so you can navigate and set up scenes much faster. There is even a quick poly count color coding, which instantly shows which models are high poly by coloring them helping you make optimization decisions at a glance. So in practice, using this add-on means you can work or preview complex scenes more smoothly, since it dynamically pairs down the scene to just what's needed for the shot. But here's the thing, it doesn't yet handle everything. For instance, it mainly works on meshes and lighting, not particles, but it's still super useful, especially for things like ArcViz or when creating large environments. Another interesting add-on is called Scene Boost, and it works like a magic button for heavy blender scenes. But here is the trick. It is an advanced proxy system, which automatically generates low-detail versions of your objects, in addition to textures, to speed things up. It basically analyzes your scene, and creates two reduced levels of detail, or LODs, for meshes and images, swapping them in and out depending on whether you are working in the viewport, doing a preview, or a final render. The cool part, it makes actual mesh proxies, not just a decimate modifier, and keeps all your modifiers, vertex groups, and animations intact, meaning you can animate using low poly standings, and then transfer the motion to a high res model, and you can do that later without any fuss. And it even supports fancy stuff, like UDIM textures and video files, and can dynamically adjust LODs based on your camera distance, so you can save memory where it doesn't actually affect the visual quality. And if you think about it, I think this add-on kind of brings a slick workflow to Blender. I mean, especially when you're working on complex scenes. So if you feel like your scene is too slow or wasting a lot of your time, you can just hide everything and work with proxies, which in my book is better than wasting time. There is also another add-on called Simplify Plus, 
which kind of turbochargers Blender's built-in Simplify performance settings. Everyone knows Blender Simplify option, it has limited subdivisions in addition to other things, but this add-on goes further than that, hence the plus in the name. It has a ton of one-click toggles and smart features to make the viewport lighter and animation smoother. For example, it can globally disable or limit expensive modifiers, not just subsurf, but almost all the types, and even has dynamic modes that kick in during playback or pose mode to keep your frame rate high while animating. There's also a handy isolating collection feature too, which hides everything except a chosen collection, so you can focus on a complex part, I mean a part of your scene, without the rest slowing you down. Essentially, the add-on helps you work faster by automatically dialing down and needed details, in addition to turning off things like extra overlays when you don't need them, saving you from constantly making play blasts or manually toggling settings. To optimize tools is another optimization add-on, but it is kind of different. But how, you might ask? Well, it doesn't automatically simplify things for you, but instead, it finds and fixes the typical culprits that make your scene heavy. The add-on will scan your scene and highlight which objects, collections, or materials are costing you the most in terms of poly count and memory. For example, it will color code every mesh in the viewport based on its vertex count, so you can immediately see which models are super dense and might need simplification, which simply means no more manually hunting for high poly models, which is like finding a needle in a haystack. It also gives you a collection analyzer view in the outliner, showing you how many vertices this collection contains, in addition to a material benchmark, which lists how much memory each material uses, so you can identify shader hogs, and an image analyzer, which lists all your textures by size and memory, and lets you resize big ones or eliminate duplicate images right inside the blender. And once you have identified the heavy stuff, the add-on provides different fixes. You can delete all the unused material slots and remove every subdivision modifier in the scene in one go, or purge all the empty collections, among other handy cleanup tricks. So basically, this add-on shines the light on what's slowing your scene down and gives you some buttons and options to tackle them, which is awesome when working on large environments or if you want to gain more speed. Another interesting add-on is called Power Save, and even though this is a little add-on, I think it makes saving your work in Blender a zero friction experience. And this add-on is kind of popular by the way, and it has been around for a while. So instead of the usual Control plus S dance, with pop-up dialogues, Power Save gives you a one-click save button right in the 3D viewport, which instantly saves your files, like a quick save but with no prompts. It actually keeps a running sketchbook of your progress. You set a base save directory, or it uses a temp folder, and every time you hit the power save button, it creates a timestamp save, so you can never overwrite your previous work or lose anything. There's also a color-coded icon, which comes with red, gray, and green, which sits in the viewport toolbar to tell you if your scene has unsaved changes, which is super handy, I think. And it can even integrate with add-ons such as hard ops, and exposes Blender's autosave settings so you can tweak autosave intervals or have it save on startup. If you're interested in these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.